Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. Hello there, and welcome to the show today. Thanks so much for dropping by. We are so, so excited that you're here today as we talk about nine best bond alternatives, where to invest for safety and income. Very interesting. Let's dive right in, shall we? Fixed income investments like bonds have been a popular investment option for generations. After all, the idea of earning reliable, safe, passive income, that's quite enticing. It is for me anyway. However, bond yields aren't really what they used to be. Maybe you've noticed. And with inflation on the rise, fixed income investments like bonds aren't nearly as attractive for investors. (laughs) So, How can you put your money to work and generate meaningful returns without taking on much risk? Thankfully, there are numerous bond alternatives investors can turn to. And the best part? Many alternatives to bonds still provide reliable income and also have much higher returns. So, why would you move away from bonds to begin with? Bonds used to be an investment vehicle people could plan their retirements with. No kidding. But these days, government and corporate bonds aren't holding up nearly as well. Here are some of the factors at play. Low yield. Many government bonds are barely paying half a percent. What? And even 10 and 30 year government bonds have low yields. Corporate bonds typically have higher yields, but the extra risk doesn't justify earning a slightly higher yield that's still lackluster. Inflation risks. U.S. inflation rose 6.8% in 2021, which is the highest rise in decades. Locking up your money in bonds is worse during periods of high inflation because your investment actually loses value when yield doesn't outpace annual inflation. Yikes. Opportunity cost. When you invest in bonds, you're taking on the opportunity cost of not investing in higher paying assets. Long story short, bonds aren't very enticing at all. Even Warren Buffett isn't impressed. In his 2020 Berkshire Hathaway shareholder letter, Buffett states, Bonds are not the place to be these days. Can you believe that the income recently available from a 10-year U.S. Treasury bond, the yield was 0.93% at year-end, had fallen 94% from the 15.8 yield available in September 1981? When you look at the math from that perspective... (laughs) It's pretty clear why bonds aren't a hot investing idea right now. The best bond alternatives to invest in. Let's do this thing. Bonds aren't a wise investment. However, there are still various fixed income investments and other less risky investments that still generate some meaningful returns. Let's take a look at real estate investment trusts first. That is number one on our list. Real estate investment trusts or REITs are companies that own or operate income-generating real estate. Usually, these properties are assets like multifamily homes and corporate real estate. REITs typically generate income from rent and are also legally obligated to pay at least 90% of taxable income in dividends to shareholders. Makes it quite nice. This reliable dividend payment structure is why REITs are an excellent bond alternative. There are also several different types of REITs like Healthcare REITs, mortgage REITs, office REITs, retail REITs, residential REITs. You can likely find individual REITs or real estate mutual funds that mostly invest in REITs with your online stockbroker or through your bank. Real estate mutual funds are a great way to diversify your portfolio with multiple holdings, but you can also research individual REITs to invest in. And since many REITs are publicly traded like stocks, liquidity isn't usually a risk. This means you can get reliable dividend income, but don't have to lock your money up like you do with bonds. Number two, real estate crowdfunding companies. Like REITs, real estate crowdfunding is another way to add real estate to your portfolio without needing a ton of upfront capital. Real estate crowdfunding involves gathering money from investors and then buying real estate properties. Typically, this also means buying income generating real estate like multifamily homes and office buildings. Fundrise, one of the most popular ones, they let you invest in real estate with as little as 
10 bucks. This low investment requirement means you don't need to be an accredited investor to get in on the action. Plus, Fundrise is fairly affordable in terms of fees in the real estate world. Investors pay 1% annually in fees, and historically, Fundrise has returned around 8% annually. Not bad at all. Overall, real estate crowdfunding is another excellent bond alternative, especially because you don't need much capital. Now, I just want a quick note here that real estate crowdfunding is typically less liquid than REITs or regular stocks, since you actually have to sell shares to other investors or back to the crowdfunding company. And that takes time. Moving on to number three on our list, preferred stocks. Preferred stocks are stocks that pay shareholders a regular dividend and also get payment priority over common stocks. If you own preferred stocks, you also receive payment before common stockholders in the event of bankruptcy or mergers. In other words, preferred stocks are a hybrid investment that's similar to bonds and stocks. On the one hand, preferred stocks typically pay higher dividends than common stocks, so you generate more fixed income and there's still appreciation potential because you own equity in a company. Many preferred stocks also have a callability feature that lets you redeem your stocks at a predetermined call price. Callability plus priority payments make preferred stocks slightly safer investments. The downsides of preferred stocks? You don't have voting rights in the company, and shares generally have less room for appreciation. However, If you want a sweet middle ground between stocks and bonds, preferred stocks are worth considering. You can buy individual preferred stocks or even invest in ETFs like the iShares Preferred and Income Securities ETF if you want exposure to dozens of different companies across multiple sectors. Number four, dividend stocks. Another popular alternative to bonds is to invest in dividend paying stocks. In some sense, Dividend stocks get you the best of both worlds. You get regular dividend income, and you can also invest with some long-term growth in mind. Granted, dividend stocks don't have nearly as much appreciation potential as growth stocks. However, if you want to add stocks to your portfolio and diversify your income, this is the strategy for you. A great place to begin your research is to look at dividend aristocrats. These aristocrats are companies in the S&P 500, that have increased and paid dividends every year for the last 25 consecutive years. There are over 60 companies that boast this title. Crazy! 60 of them! AT&T, Chevron, Lowe's, McDonald's, Target, Walmart. Those are just to name a very few. Of course, you can look for other dividend-paying stocks as well. A lot of companies pay dividends, but haven't been around long enough to make dividend aristocrat list. Commission-free brokers like M1 Finance and eToro let you invest in dividend-paying stocks for free. You can also invest through your bank. Whatever route you choose, dividend investing is a reliable way to earn more passive income, and the returns certainly outperform bonds these days. Now let's take a look at number five, fixed annuities. Fixed annuities and bonds are both pretty safe investments investors use to guarantee income. The main difference is that fixed annuities are a type of insurance you purchase that pay a certain amount of interest over a given period of time. People often buy fixed annuities for life as they enter retirement. You can buy variable annuities that pay various interest rates depending on how well the fund is doing. Alternatively, you can buy fixed annuities that have a set payment schedule and interest rate for even more security. The Appeal of Annuities is that you're getting fixed income for the rest of your life. Plus, your money can grow tax-free, and you're only taxed when you withdraw the money. However, if you wait until retirement to withdraw funds, you should theoretically be in a lower tax bracket. Annuities typically have high fees, though, which is one of the main drawbacks. According to annuity.org, variable annuities typically charge 2.3% in fees, but can charge up to 3% or more. Fixed annuities have lower fees because they're simpler, but you're going to pay more than your average ETF. If you're curious about buying annuities, you can check out marketplaces like Blueprint Income and annuity providers like Age Up. Here's number six on our list today, high-yield savings account. 
High-yield savings accounts are another pretty reliable bond alternative that also keeps things very simple. Currently, there are plenty of high-yield savings accounts that pay, yeah, 0.4 to 0.6% APY, some up towards the 1% mark. This doesn't outpace inflation by any stretch, but compared to the average savings account interest rate of 0.06%, yeah, I got a penny last month. Thanks, guys. High-yield savings accounts are superior to that. Plus, many leading high-yield savings accounts pay welcome bonuses, too, 100 to 250 bucks, just for opening an account and making a qualifying deposit. You can read our list of the best high-yield savings accounts for a current list of rates and bonuses. Some of our favorites, by the way, Axos Bank, CIT Bank, Discover Bank, and Onjuno. Since inflation outpaces high-yield savings accounts, though, this is not going to be an ideal long-term investment. If you need somewhere to park your spare cash or maybe an emergency fund like I do without tying it up in an investment, these savings accounts are definitely for you. Number 8. Real Estate Debt When people think about real estate investing, equity investing is usually what comes to mind. However, investing in real estate debt can be just as lucrative and you don't need much capital to start. For example, companies like Ground Floor let you invest in short-term high-yield real estate debt investments. You only need $10 to start investing. And according to Ground Floor, investors have generated 10.5% actual returns to date. That's huge. The Ground Floor Marketplace lets you browse ongoing real estate projects you can invest in. Ground Floor outlines the interest rate, loan term, and loan-to-ARV ratio, which helps explain the value of the loan to the future value of the real estate project. You can invest in as many loans as you like, and you fund your Ground Floor account with money from your bank account. Most Ground Floor loans are between 6 to 9 months. Loans are certainly riskier than investing in bonds, though. However, because Ground Floor only requires $10 to invest, you can diversify your loan portfolio with a ton of loans. This reduces the risk a single default drains your investment, making Ground Floor a little less risky than meets the eye. Ground Floor also attempts to recoup money through foreclosure if borrowers default, and short-term loans also limit risk. However, you should still consider your level of risk tolerance before pursuing this alternative to bonds. And number nine, worthy bonds. If you found a bond that paid 5% annually and compounded daily, you'd probably be surprised given how low bond yields are these days. But with Worthy, that's exactly what you get. No kidding. A 5% fixed income investment that only takes $10 to start investing. Here's how Worthy works. Investors buy bonds from Worthy starting as low as $10. Worthy lends out money to American businesses as loans, Worthy earns interest on these loan payments. Original investors get 5% in fixed interest that compounds daily. What really sets Worthy apart from normal bonds is that you can cash out your holdings anytime without paying any fees. And since Worthy doesn't charge account fees, this is basically a 5% savings account you can use to diversify your portfolio. Boom! Note, though, that Worthy is not FDIC insured. Plus, Since Worthy loans money, there's risk companies default on payments if they go bankrupt. Worthy mitigates some risk by backing bonds with assets from businesses it loans money to. So theoretically, this means Worthy can liquidate assets to cover losses. It's kind of unclear, though, what might happen if many Worthy borrowers default simultaneously. Ultimately, Worthy carries more risk than government bonds, but if you want a reliable 5% fixed income investment that's much more liquid, Worthy is definitely for you. Here's what to consider when choosing bond alternatives. So now that you know some of the best alternatives to invest in, here are just a few more factors that you need to consider before choosing your investment. First up, and you knew this was coming, risk versus reward. Safe investments like bonds typically have lower returns in exchange for security. So this is why it's important to know your level of risk tolerance as an investor. Plenty of bond alternatives have slightly more risk for more returns. Furthermore, investing in assets like dividend stocks or ETFs 
adds volatility to the mix that you have to learn to stomach. Ultimately, diversification is your friend here. You can park some money in safer investment vehicles like a high-yield savings account or dividend-paying stocks while still investing in more lucrative assets like stocks, real estate, or even cryptocurrencies. There are also funding requirements to look at, too. A lot of bond alternatives don't require a whole lot of capital. However, certain REITs and crowdfunding companies do require you to be an accredited investor. Similarly, earning meaningful returns from dividend-paying stocks usually means having a sizable portfolio. Every investor has to start somewhere, though. So don't worry about, you know, only buying one share of a certain stock or investing with Fundrise with just 10 bucks. However, know that growing your wealth is going to take time. Liquidity. One big downside of bonds is that they are fairly illiquid. And while you can usually sell bonds before maturation, you face penalties for early exchange. If you're investing for the short term, you need to invest in highly liquid assets so you can sell off your investments and access capital when you need it. This is why high-yield savings accounts in companies like Worthy are so popular. In contrast, liquidity isn't as important for long-term investments. So, before investing, know how much of your capital is for your long-term nest egg and what percentage you might need within the next few months or maybe a few years. Now let's take a look at some FAQs when we bring up this topic to people. First, we get this question a lot. Are bonds a safe investment? Yeah, bonds are safe, especially if you purchase government bonds. However, because of current inflation rates, bonds aren't good at all because you actually lose money due to the low bond yields. Are CDs better than bonds? Okay, so certificates of deposits, or CDs, are often compared to bonds because both investments are safe and provide fixed income. The main difference, though, is that CDs are issued by banks and credit unions. However, like bonds, CDs are not going to be smart right now because of inflation. The best CD rates are paying like a half a percent to 0.65%. Yikes. So you might as well just use a high-yield savings account. What is safer than bonds? CDs are just as safe as bonds because they're FDIC insured. Similarly, money you deposit in a high-yield savings account is also insured, making these two strategies incredibly safe investments. That said, you should always consider the risk of inflation and opportunity cost of staying so safe. <laughs> Putting money you need in the near future in safe investments is totally smart, but for the long term, taking on a little bit more risk for a higher return is definitely worthwhile. So our methodology for today's show and the article that corresponds with this show. The college investor, as you know, is we're dedicated to making you or to helping you make informed decisions around financial topics, like how to invest your money. To accomplish this, we provide a list of popular investing strategies and then just outline which strategies suit different investing goals and level of risk tolerance. So for the best bond alternatives, We've chosen strategies that either have similar levels of investment security or options that are more growth-focused. We also consider factors like investing fees, complexity, liquidity, and lots of other criteria just to pick the best options. We believe that this list today of bond alternatives provides a diverse range of investing options that are ultimately better than bond investing. Some quick final thoughts and we'll wrap up the show for today. I know it's a little bit longer than usual, but any investment is going to have certain risk versus reward ratio. When picking a bond alternative to invest in, considering this ratio is really what's the most important thing. Bonds are popular because they're safe and predictable. If you need this sort of investing strategy for later stages in life, safe options like annuities and dividend-paying stocks could be for you. In contrast, if you have a longer investing time frame, taking on more risk for more growth potential usually makes sense. There are so many ways to put your money to work for you. The main thing is to start and remain consistent so you can build a nest egg that serves you for the rest of your life. That is our show for today. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you want to dive in deeper, find some links to some of the things we talked about today. Find this article, copy and paste the title of the podcast into the search bar at thecollegeinvestor.com. 
That is thecollegeinvestor.com. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you again real soon.